in the uh, APEC this year, uh, both the leaders meeting and also the APEC CEO summit. You just spoken at the opening panel, Professor. So how do you see we would be able to, with our capability, to carry on this kind of discussion in the right direction? We have to define the specific elements of the global system. Mm -hmm. For example, nature and environment, uh, climate change, and then to see what are uh, actually the areas where we can make true progress, uh, where we can have a real impact. I'm very glad uh, that uh, uh, China is integrated into our initiative to plant one trillion trees in the next 10 years by making its own contribution. We have to try with a collaborative platform where we integrate the best people, the most relevant people, and then to work for progress. Mm. Now the base has been formed, but um, we have to go one step further. We have to have a strategic mood. We have to construct the world of tomorrow. It's a systemic transformation of the world. So we have to define how the world should look like, which we want to come out of this transformation period. Earlier, we have the great narrative of so-called globalization. Yeah. And everybody believe in it, and everybody think this is our shared future. Now, as the world is changing, we need to reshape again the vision, as you just said. But how to bring everybody on board? So is now the opinion uh, globalization has failed, and we are entering into an era of deglobalization. I think that's wrong. Uh, we, of course, we have the reshaping of certain supply chains. So for certain physical goods, we may see much more uh, reshoring or homeshoring. In reality, uh, the world has moved closer together because um, uh, we, we are moving from a physical world much more in a digital world. And the digital world by nature is much more globally oriented. Mm -hmm. Now you asked how to do it. Yes. I think it needs uh, what we feel in the World Economic Forum, a multi-stakeholder approach. It's certainly uh, governments who have to be in the lead, but uh, business most of the solutions will come through innovation from business and we have to integrate the large population. We have to um, mentor mm -hmm. the population and to show through our good examples that um, uh, the future requires this change mm -hmm. and the change at the end ultimately mm -hmm. will be beneficial for them. From your perspective, how do you understand this ambition of China to have the Chinese path toward modernization and share it uh, with the developing world? I uh, respect uh, China's achievements, which are tremendous over the last uh, over 40 years since the opening up and uh, policy and reform policy came into action. I think it's um, a role model for many countries, but I think also uh, we should leave it to each country uh, to make its own decision what system it wants to adapt. And I think we should be very careful in imposing systems. But the Chinese model is certainly a very attractive model for quite a number of countries.